This is Morgan Hazelwood, back again with more writing tips and writerly musings. Today, I'm here to talk to you about querying versus the submission process. So last week, I wrapped up my virtual Balticon notes, but before I launched into sharing my notes from Con Zealand, I figured you were owed an update. Confession. Camp NaNoWriMo did not happen for me in July of 2020. Now, this doesn't mean that I didn't move forward with my writing, though. I finally finished revising my YA manuscript again and got back into the querying trenches. And I took a pair of short stories and a poem of mine and submitted them to publishers. So I just use these words, submit and query. What is the difference? I'm sending my work out. Why isn't it called the same thing? Well, if you've been following me for any amount of time, you are probably familiar with the concept of a query letter. It's a brief, less than a page um, letter that talks about your characters and their stakes with a brief paragraph about the stats and the genre and maybe listing a couple similar novels for comparison's sake and an even briefer paragraph about your bio. Um, if your biography is more than a paragraph, you're focusing on the wrong thing. Now, once you've gotten that heralded agent, hmm, um, they will submit your work to publishers on your behalf. Why? Why don't, why do you need this middleman? Well, most traditional publishers of novels do not accept unagented work. They want you to be vetted and they want to be sure that you have a person well-versed in book contracts to represent you partially so you can't claim ignorance later. Now, for the short story market, it is a completely different beast. They have the payments listed. It's like X cents per word or a hundred bucks for a story. So there's really no contract needed in those instances. So they expect writers to submit their own works without an agent. Because really, the commission on a thousand word story that nets 80 bucks at the pro writer rate, pro writer rate, is chump change for anyone if you're going to commission on 80 bucks. Well, now publishers, be they for novels or short stories or flash fiction, don't get query letters. They get cover letters with the writing included, sometimes as a Word or PDF attachment, sometimes copy pasted into the email. These cover letters plus the full works are called submissions or a submissions packet. For novels, your literary agent will often have marketing information, I believe. And the person you're sending these to at the publisher is called the acquiring editor. So as I've discussed before, cover letters are far more brief than a query letter. You get one, maybe two sentences to describe your writing. Another sentence for its length, rounded to the nearest hundred words for short stories or the exact count for flash fiction and then a two to three sentence bio if they ask you to include one. Especially with shorter works, you don't need to tell the acquiring editor about your story. It's right there and can speak for itself in, you know, not many more words than you have in a page. So despite the word editor in their title, Acquiring editors are not just people who edit your work with feedback and all. Acquiring editors decide what they will and will not be publishing. They are the ones to decide if your story fits the theme of their magazine, anthology, website, or publishing house. Sure, some of them will do edits after your work is accepted, 
But you should only be submitting fully polished works that are already as good as you can make them. There is a lot of competition out there and you want to stand out from the pack. Also, there's usually limited space, either in print, in time, in budget, or usually all three. If you had the choice between a solid piece and a might be amazing, but oh my God, it needs so much work and we have to have these prepped in two weeks and you've never worked with this writer before and they might take the direction at its good or they might go off in some weird tangent, you probably go for the one that you know your readers will enjoy without taking the chance on the one that needs more work without the guaranteed payoff. So unlike querying agents, many publishers do ask for exclusive submissions. This means that while you usually normally query multiple agents at a time, although preferably not from the same agency that's usually asked uh, to be avoided, you should only be sending your shorts to one publisher at a time. Now, I wish I could tell you that because of the exclusiveness, all publishers are prompt with their acceptance or rejection letters. But as with all things writer related, it can vary tremendously. Do pay close attention to the open for submission window timeframes and arrange them so you're not waiting too much or miss an opportunity for a better market. For me, I usually go to The Grinder, not the hookup website, but thegrinder.diabolicalplots.com and search for paying markets. I start with the pro level ones, the ones paying eight cents a word or more, and then try the sub pro, and then maybe the free markets, but mostly I just sit on the piece until another paying market opens. I also Google short story markets and check the listicles for places that might not be listed on the grinder. When looking for agents, I usually go to querytracker.net and search for agents in my genre and then cross-reference their linked manuscript wish list, their Twitters, and their literary agent profiles to see if the books they represent or mention are similar to my works. If I don't recognize any of those book titles, they're probably not going to be a good fit for me. A word of warning, once you get that query letter or cover letter perfected, you're probably going to want to reuse them. Be very, very, very careful when doing this. Make sure to update the agent name and any level of personalization you added to the query letter. If you mention the name of a publication you're submitting to in a cover letter, don't be me. Today, made this mistake. Make sure to update the publication's name before you submit your piece to a different publication. I got a very quick rejection on a submission I made that mistake with, although the publication does have an under 48 hour turnaround time, which is impressive, but still it was probably not a mark in my favor. Between short stories, including that rejection today, and my manuscript, I've gotten eight rejections this year. When you get a rejection, there's always this doubt. Is it my writing? Is it the market? Did I flub the query or the cover letter? Am I picking the wrong agents? Form rejections can't tell you anything, but they're becoming more and more commonplace as both agents and editors get tired of writers responding negatively to thoughtful feedback. They ruined it for the rest of us. If you do get a personalized rejection, you are on the right path. That's amazing. I've gotten a few in the past, but none this year. But I'm not letting it stop me. It is a tough market this year. I'm going to keep querying and submitting because I believe in my work. Best of luck to all of you out there 
here, out there, out here, with me, in the query trenches or in the submissions grind. And that's all for today. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, hit that subscribe button and share it with all your friends. It goes a long way towards helping people find me. And I'll be back again next Monday with more writing tips and writerly musings. Bye-bye.